So as you can see, I've removed the roof lining and the trim off the A-pillar. The flooring has been removed because that was absolutely soaking wet. I believe it's been like that for quite some time. With the floor lining removed, the drips were coming down here, running along the inside of this inner arch and down underneath the uh, side step. Now this has probably been going on for quite a while. So I think the best course of action now is to trace the leak and have someone stand outside the van spraying the top of the windscreen down with a hose in the hope that I can work out where that water is actually getting into the van. So to inspect inside the roof I'll be using a Depth Tech DS520. This is the model with three lenses, one on the end and one either side. You can also attach a magnet and a hook to it should you need to retrieve anything from a hard to reach place. So you can see water's coming out from behind here. I've removed this tab, you can see evidence of rusty water on the inside of that tab. Um, it's clearly where it's been running down for quite some time. You can trace that back up the pillar. Got this hole here. If we could have a look inside there. It appears this is where water is coming in. This is a known area on T4s for letting in water. It's welded, seam sealed and painted, but over time the seam sealer can become brittle and crack. This can happen if you've got lowered suspension, stiffened suspension, or if you hit a really bad pothole. But it's not just this, it's up here too, behind this rubber seal, there looks to be some separation. So if you are addressing this area, it's wise to have a look up here too, because that, that could get missed if, the, if this door seal was back up where it's supposed to be. You can see that that might actually get missed and you would concentrate on this area thinking that you'd stop the leak and it had been repaired only for it to continue and then when you peel this back I think we have the culprit so that's two areas that we'll need addressing so while I've got the cab roof panel removed I've taken the opportunity to remove the old fabric it had gone quite green on the corners where the water was getting in and other filthy dirty marks from over the years. These marks are from drawing pins that I placed on the roof liner to stop it from peeling away. Wasn't really a very good idea because they ended up going rusty. 
little metal frame here that holds the interior light in place. Two of the tabs have snapped off while removing it. It's a very brittle metal and I suspect that some of the other tabs may snap off when the time comes to refit those. It had to come out because the fabric has to get up against this edge and then the, there's a, I think there's 10 tabs, three along the top, three along the bottom and two on each side and that holds that in place and then a solid frame around the back of the panel. Just have a look here. I've decided the windscreen is going to have to come out. It's not a job I'm going to attempt myself. I'm going to take it to a professional body shop and have them do the work. I found someone who has already posted videos about working on T4s and they know the rust areas. They know the problem areas. They've done lots of windscreen surrounds. I've had the van for almost 18 years. I'm probably going to have it for a long time to come. I don't want to pay for a repair and then in a few years have that rust come back. So I'm taking it to an experienced body shop who already work on T4s. They know them inside out and they're going to do the work. It's not going to be cheap, but as these fans are appreciating classics now, they're worth spending the money on because the values are only going one way. Hope the videos helped you if you've got a leak. Uh, helped in diagnosing it. it it can be an annoying thing especially if you've got the roof liner in and the floor and everything i recommend taking those out and doing a full inspection the thing with the with the floor liner is it's going to take a long time to get that dry if it has got wet you've got rubber on the top and almost like a bin bag type material on the back so getting the water to evaporate out isn't going to be easy I was lucky enough that I could leave it on the driveway for a couple of weeks when we had a really hot spell and that did eventually dry it out. It took weeks. It's now folded up out of the way in the shed where, where it's dry and it'll be refitted once the windscreen surround has been repaired and the new windscreen put in. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.